Hey you guys, I wanted to cover this article from Atlanta Black Star and give commentary about the Black Haitians who are still facing difficult times right now as a result of the earthquake that hit their home. If you all have taken notice, it's been a while since I've done a video that's more political based and for a good reason. It can become tiring and exasperating when trying to break down all the fallacies regarding a morally corrupt system. That's why I took a step back from focusing on this area for a moment. However, with the Haitians impoverished state of living and displacement, it is crucial to discuss how a certain disgruntled ex-president who served one term is attempting to create a narrative through racialized propaganda and sentiments to view Haitians as disease-ridden and not fit for U.S. assistance. I find it funny that this orange face freak is also responsible for how the Central Park Five were not awarded sympathy from the general public during the late 80s and proposed that the young boys at the time should face execution, which was exceedingly excessive given that they were treated unjustly and were failed by a system that was constructed by an oppressive group of people. Now we fast forward to 2021 and Haitians are attempting to seek refuge from a natural disaster and again Orange Face rears his ugly head to try and distort the image of these people. It's a whole hair catastrophe and he has some nerve to scrutinize the livelihood of people that prior to the earthquake were already in a deficient state due to scarcity and resources and other forms of infrastructure. But let me read this article to you guys and you'll see what I mean. So the article starts off by saying that as the trending of hashtag Haitian Lives Matter dwindled on social media, thousands of migrants have been deported to the earthquake ravaged island nation. Hundreds continue to risk their lives to touch American soil and all have been targets of racial epithets by former U.S. President Donald Trump. Guatemalan authorities rescued a group of 126 migrants from a container heading to Mexico to cross into the U.S. on October 9th. The 106 Haitian migrants found in the container joined the more than 10,000 from the island nation who have tried to cross the Mexican border into the U.S. in recent weeks in hopes of being granted asylum. On the same day of the container rescue in Guatemala, the Mexican authorities intercepted 652 migrants in three trucks on a highway in Tamaulipas, Mexico. The hundreds of migrants rescued from the pack container on Saturday received medical care and were sent back to Honduras, where they crossed into the Guatemala. Nine of the migrants were from Ghana, officials said. Now, before I give my thoughts about the incompetency that is the equivalent of a trash repository, I just want to say that the unfortunate side of social media is that when people no longer want to talk about something or some other new distraction manifests, the serious issues appear to dissipate and phase out of existence. And I have a few subscribers from Haiti, and so I do speak with them on a weekly basis just to check and make sure that they're doing all right. And it's funny because if we take a simple look back at history for a moment, the United States has greatly benefited from Haiti. Initially, the U.S. had a quizzical perspective for how the Haitians achieved their own independence from the Haitian Revolution because it was astonishing how Black people during that time were able to rebel against the ones who subjugated them. And the U.S. continued to import and export with Haiti. However, the trades in some cases were unfavorable for Haiti. Ironically, the U.S. also refused to acknowledge the Haitian Revolution on its soil. And this was most likely done out of fear to prevent the Black people on U.S. soil from revolting and creating their own revolution. It further goes to show the depravity that the U.S. is in possession of, but they don't have a problem taking in the people of Afghanistan who were at the mercy of Taliban this year. And not surprising, the complexions are vastly different because to the system, anything beyond a certain shade is treated with hostile obstruction. But I want to keep the focus of this video on the Haitian immigrants themselves. And according to the article, there were nine people from Ghana. And no doubt, the way that people are treated when trying to cross the border from Mexico into the U.S. is harsh, cruel, and subhuman. I have a firm belief that physical force is not the answer to subduing another person because all that goes to show is how much humans have not evolved when it comes to our behavior and responses to stimuli. But I find this next part to be interesting, so listen to this. So it says, while Haiti has become the epicenter for massive earthquakes and political unrest, President Joe Biden's administration has expelled more than 7,500 migrants from a, under a bridge at the southern border back to Haiti. 
More than 2,000 of those migrants were allowed to stay in the U.S., the New York Times reported. In a recent Fox News interview, Trump said that letting Haitians into the U.S. is like a death wish for our country. So we have hundreds of thousands of people flowing in from Haiti. Haiti has a tremendous AIDS problem. AIDS is a step beyond. AIDS is a real bad problem, Trump said. Many of those people will probably have AIDS and they're coming into our country and we don't do anything about it. We let everybody in. A Daily Beast reporter shared a clip with the caption, Trump fear mongers about AIDS among Haitian migrants. It was not the first time Trump accused Haitians of being carriers of the chronic condition. According to the Times, Trump uttered similar words during an Oval Office meeting in 2017 about how many immigrants had received visas. Trump said all of the 15,000 had AIDS. So first off, I don't think we should be shocked by the actions of Joe Biden. Black people had it in their hearts and beliefs that this man was somehow absolved of his past racial decrees and actions simply because he's the face of the Democratic Party. But we have to learn our lesson the hard way. So when his administration made the decision to send them back to a country clearly in a state of destitution. You have to understand that there is no such thing as refinement when it comes to those who have the power to oppress an entire race of people. Again, I don't know what possessed Black people to believe that this man had somehow changed his tyrannical ways, but let this be a wake-up call that this belief is nothing more than a fairy tale that I think we subconsciously hope manifests into a reality. Some may say, well, he let some of them stay, but the numbers are staggering in comparison to the number who were deported and I'm sure that some families were ripped apart during this disheartening process. Now when we switch gears and talk about the parasitic cancer who's in dire need of a hair transplant because it went with the wind decades ago, he has some nerve to malign and defame the characters of people that are suffering from a devastating crisis by making all of these false statements and claims and just when you thought he couldn't be more savage with his destructive words, he goes and accuses people of having life-threatening illnesses. What I can't stand is the stereotype that Black people from other cultures are somehow subject to all of these ailments due to the respect of countries not being advanced enough in terms of medical sciences, and as a result are looked at as less than human. And you want to talk about stats? Let's talk about stats. So who leads in the United States when it comes to medical malpractice? How about welfare and insurance fraud? What about when it comes to waging wars on other countries under the false pretense of claiming to liberate when in reality it's sheer exploitation? And these are just the white collar crimes. I'm not even talking about sex offenders and the introduction of drugs into the black community. That's a whole other video. But don't throw these asinine statements around while your own closet is overflowing with these skeletons falling out like a cascading waterfall. Why do we even still listen to this idiotic buffoon? Oh, I know why. Because white supremacy thrives from his banter and his followers are just as irrational as him. He is the face of what they all wish they could say, and it's a classic case of racial degradation disguised as political propaganda. He can say all these slanderous statements he wants, but it won't take away from his thousands of failures like that university, the airline, the mortgage he tried to come up with, and honestly, if you looked up the definition of bankruptcy, his face would be right next to it. And the funniest part about all of those very telling instances is that it still qualified him enough to be president, because as long as you're a member of their society, mediocrity does not factor into this decision for who will rule this country. But moving forward, the article says, while Haiti is among the top countries for the disease in the Caribbean, according to the Joint United Nations program, AIDS-related deaths have fallen by 63% in the past decade. Trump also made headlines in 2018 for calling Haiti and African countries S-hole countries. U.S. Department of Homeland Security officials faced backlash last month after photos made public by the El Paso Times showed Border Patrol agents on horseback flinging rope at Haitian migrants as they crossed the Rio Grande from Cuidad, Acuna, Mexico into Del Rio, Texas. Many compared the images to slave catchers chasing runaway slaves in the antebellum South. The images led to outrage all over social media. Haitian Americans flooded the internet with hashtag Haitian Lives Matter. Celebrities, world leaders, and civil rights advocates also spoke out against the treatment of the Haiti migrants, who are Black. So clearly, Orange Face is flat out malevolent and cataclysmic with his choice of wording, but he's all bark and no bite. I disregard anything he says. His education level is subpar, and really the fact that he can formulate an opinion on anything just goes to show how much as a society we have regressed. The fact that his IQ is as low as it is and he's allowed to speak perplexes me, but even Neely Fuller Jr. told us a long time ago that if you don't understand racism, white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else will only confuse you. 
That's why earlier I mentioned to you guys that you can be mediocre, but still inhabit a prestigious position as long as you have the complexion for it. I remember when Barack Obama ran for president, he needed to have a decorative educational background because he was a black biracial man. So the same system did not work in his favor. He had to work twice as hard and tiptoe throughout his presidency, which is why he didn't help black people out in a way that's concrete, only symbolically. And it also points out another fact that we refuse to acknowledge. I think when we conceive the thought of disparagement, we think of African Americans and their current conditions under the system, but we have to realize and comprehend that it is the same across the diaspora. Other cultures of Black people are subject to this treatment because it doesn't matter the ethnicity or nationality, only the race, which is why we need to stop conflating these constructs. The world has a universal outlook of Black people, which is that we are second-rate citizens not worthy of occupying spaces of leadership and power. This is a global concept and why I say time and time again that this oppression is inescapable because you're bound to encounter it in one area or another. Now my heart goes out to the Black people of Haiti. I cannot even begin to fathom how they feel right now being separated from their loved ones and family. I'm sure it's extremely heartbreaking. And their issues are real, even if they're not the trendy topic at the moment, and we shouldn't forget that. But let me know your thoughts on the reject ex-president leader of failures with his meaningless tirade. And also, please make sure you guys continue to send love and positive thoughts to the Haitians. They are the reason I made this video. And I just want to say that I stand with you, Haiti, and the way that you are being treated is unacceptable. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and please share this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.